Please, may I ask you to be upstanding while the national anthem of the United Arab Emirates is played. Thank you. Your Highness, Sheikh Mashid bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Excellences, graduates, students, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this, the eighth graduation ceremony of the Emirates Academy of Hospitality Management. My name, if you don't know me, is Dr. Stuart Jauncey, and I have the great honor to be the Dean of the Emirates Academy of Hospitality Management. And on behalf of the Academy, it gives me the greatest of pleasure to welcome you all to this celebration of the academic achievements of the 63 students who are graduating today. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Mr. Gerald Lawless, who is Chairman of the Emirates Academy of Hospitality Management Governing Body and President and Group Chief Executive Officer of Jumeirah. Mr. Lawless. Thank you, Stuart. Your Highness, Sheikh Majid bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Chairman of Dubai Culture and Arts Authority, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, our very special graduates, it's my great pleasure to have the honour to introduce our special speaker today, Mr. Tim Clark, President of Emirates Airline. Tim has been with Emirates since it was launched in the 1980s when then they were the proud operators of three aircraft. Tim Clark has been in the civil aviation business since 1972. In 1975, he moved to Gulf Air in Bahrain and subsequently to Dubai in 1985, where he became a member of the founding team of Emirates as head of airline planning. Tim has spent the past quarter of a century building the world's greatest airline under the chairmanship of His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum. Tim and his management team have created a global network carrier, flying state-of-the-art airliners to every part of the globe. He has been president of Emirates since 2003 and has been instrumental in the development of this incredible success story. As we all know today, Emirates serves over 126 destinations and operates a fleet of 186 wide-bodied aircraft. I did this little research actually and finalised it on the 30th of September and at that time I had said 182 wide-bodied aircraft but Tim corrected me this morning already in one day alone they've taken delivery of three Airbus A380s now bringing us up to 186 aircraft with Emirates. It has also taken delivery recently of its 100th Boeing 777, which is also the 1,000th Boeing 777 to be manufactured. 
So congratulations on that. Emirates Airline is also the largest customer for the fabulous new Airbus A380 with about 25 in service, actually exactly 25 in service, and another 65 on order. I must say that within the hotel industry, we are extremely grateful to Emirates for what it has done to develop the tourism industry, particularly in Dubai. We know that over 5 million tourists stayed in Dubai hotels in the first half of this year, 2012. Therefore, it all looks well for us to exceed 10 million tourists into Dubai for the year, which is quite an achievement for a city of about 2 million people. However, this would not have been achieved if we did not have the airlift and the support of Emirates under the inspired leadership of Tim Clark. His drive, his energy and his commitment to the cause of Emirates and Dubai are a great example of what can be achieved in today's aviation, travel and tourism industry. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tim Clark. Thank you. Your Highness Sheikh Majid bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, ladies and gentlemen, graduates, and Gerald, thank you very much for that very generous introduction. Graduating is one of life's defining moments, and I remember fondly my own, although I'm less excited to reveal that it was 41 years ago that I walked off with my economics degree. But like many of you here today, I too experienced that sense of great anticipation, but also anxiety on the road ahead. They say times were simpler then, but sometimes I wonder. The first electronic calculator was still years away, and mathematical calculations were conducting using slide rules, log tables, or mechanical adding machines. Mobile phones, iPads were not even a twinkle in the eye. And jobs were pretty scarce then. But the emotions and questions were fundamentally the same as yours. Where do I go next? And what does the future have in store for me? And this is the theme I want to touch on this morning. Optimism versus anxiety. And how I hope my story and that of Emirates speaks to your immediate futures. Predicting the future is not a wise course of action particularly these days. Indeed, Romania has recently introduced fines for fortune tellers who incorrectly forecast their patrons' for fortunes and get it plain wrong. And you would go quickly bankrupt if you attempted to predict the future in the airline industry. We are a sector that is the most exposed to global change, be it volcanoes, oil spikes, wars, natural disasters, economic downturns and upswings, and variations in consumer sentiment and confidence. Just consider our most recent world events and their associated winds of uncertainty. Economic and political change is all around us. The Middle East is seeing events unfold that will profoundly affect the region for decades and generations to come. And the Great Recession of 2008 is sadly far from behind us. Banks we knew have gone. Governments and leaders that were once institutions have been swept aside. And technology we were just about comfortable with is now redundant. Truly, these are historic times. And one day, your children will read about the events of the last three years in history books, or more accurately, on their mobile devices. And it's a natural reaction to therefore feel anxious, particularly at a time of personal change. The boom of 2007 is over, and this will be a painful period for many in search of good jobs and eking out a, a new career. But ladies and gentlemen, there is good news. It was the same in 1971 when I popped out of my university. India and Pakistan were at war. Mount Etna erupted. A devastating tsunami hit the Bay of Bengal and the Vietnam War, Vietnam War continued. At any moment in time, you can be pessimistic or hopeful, and the greatest attribute of youth is certainly its inherent optimism. The point is, some 40 years later, despite all the trials and tribulations, and all we throw at it, 
Mankind, and the planet for that matter, has a remarkable ability to survive, adapt, and ultimately prosper. You are a generation that will live longer, are smarter, healthier, and be almost certainly more prosperous. And I believe, therefore, we can be confident in the future. I know this because the story of the company I work for, Emirates, is both truly global and shares many parallels with the challenges and opportunities you will encounter in the next phase of your life. It was also in 1971 that the United Arab Emirates was born in its modern form. Just under a decade and a half later, Dubai took a risk and created Emirates Airline. It has been said that Emirates is Dubai and that our story is Dubai's story. There is some truth in that. Emirates was created in an environment where failure was not an option. Although oil is all around us in the Middle East, Dubai was not blessed with the massive petroleum reserves of its regional neighbours. As a result, self-sufficiency, resilience and innovation is in Dubai's DNA. Rarely does a day go by where a new challenge does not present itself at our door. This drive to create novel ways to prosper has been with Dubai since day one. That is why the Emirates is home to a thriving trading hub, a deep water port, and an emerging financial centre, some of the greatest hotels in the world, and Emirates Airline. There is no reason why the lessons of this story cannot be yours either. Dubai is at the heart of the new open economy based on trade, interconnectivity, and open markets. The skills that you have developed here at the Emirates Academy of Hospitality will be extremely valuable, for there are huge opportunities for talent within Dubai's many and various business sectors. You have already done well by choosing to study in Dubai. I hope many of you will stay here for a long time, and I'm sure some of you will come to work for Emirates. Dubai is an, important, uh, is an opportunity cluster without restrictions or constraints. We lie at the crossroads of the global economy, something that, that has made it a natural and fitting locale for business hubs. It's, it's true, Dubai has had its recent challenges, as did many economies, and we too have a way to go to navigate free from the contagion of 208 and the Eurozone debt problems today. But it has reminded all of us that the cornerstones of Dubai's success and future prospects are and must be trade, aviation, tourism and hospitality, information and communications technology. And the philosophical fundamentals have always, been, have always been there, including a positive outward mindset and a liberal welcoming market. And the open market ideals of Dubai continue to attract talent from all over the world, making the Emirates one of the most multicultural places on earth. This is also true of the Emirates Group, which employs 157 nationalities among our 70,000 staff, a true testament to Dubai's openness and its demographic diversity. Dubai has diversified considerably since I first began working here in 1985, but the basic premise has always been the same. Private industry and the government working hand in hand to create the right conditions for growth. This can-do present was present in the 1980s when Emirates was founded. From humble origins, it has grown steadily ever since. And today, Emirates is the world's largest international carrier by kilometres flow, bigger than Lufthansa, British Airways, Air France or Singapore Airlines. And as Gerald mentioned, because of Emirates, Dubai is also the largest home of the A380, due to our 25 uh, aircraft in operation and another 65 set for delivery. Emirates is one of the most profitable airlines in the world and is still on a growth trajectory. And how did we do this? And it, it, ladies and gentlemen, it was no accident. In the 1980s, Dubai had no local airline. Gulf Air was the region's major carrier, flying all over the GCC and the world. But in 1985, Gulf Air cut its services to, dramatically to Dubai and the government was left with a crisis on its hands. From this somewhat stark situation, the Dubai government created Emirates, gave us $10 million of startup capital, and two used jets leased from PIA, and told us never to come back asking for more. There were plenty of struggles, again, this theme of, of adversity. For a while, the situation was precarious, 
But with our back to the wall, and knowing that there would be no bailout if we failed, we came together, worked hard, and got down to the business of running our airline in a smart and efficient manner. And I'm proud for Emirates in Dubai when I say that we have been profitable ever since, and it has a great future. Today, Emirates and the aviation sector account for 28% of the gross, gross domestic product of Dubai. So let me take this opportunity to encourage you to stand by your convictions, regardless of what the naysayers tell you. I've had plenty of that during my career. An example of this was in the year 2000, when we were the first airline to purchase the A380. At that time, we were much smaller, and no one could understand why we would invest so heavily in such a large and untested jet. This was also true when we became the largest customer of Boeing 77 aircraft, and more recently, during the global financial downturn, we have continued to add new routes and progressively take more planes from Airbus and Boeing. Instead of sitting on our hands and focusing on existing airline business models, we innovated with technology and ideas and built up our business, convinced that the new fundamentals of the global economy, developing markets, travel aspirations, and digital connectivity were only just truly emerging on a global scale. Through the many challenging times since 1985, from the two Gulf Wars, SARS, volcanic ash clouds, other regional conflicts, you name it, we have stuck to our fundamental beliefs, despite the occasional nerves. 40 years ago, in 1971-72, perhaps one in 10 people traveled internationally. Today, it is three in 10. In the next few decades, while I should heed my own lesson not to make predictions, it will and must be more. The Brazilians, the Chinese, the Indians, and the Africans traveling as freely as you and I often take for granted. I am convinced, therefore, that we can be confident in the future. Whatever short-term obstacles may be put in our way, and a bit of personal advice, whatever you do, do it well and find your passion. The late Steve Jobs says as much, perhaps more eloquently in Stanford. Find something that you truly love doing and work very, very hard at it. Fortunately for me, I was lucky. Aviation was in my blood from a very early age. And the story goes that as an expatriate child in Borneo in the 1950s, most of you wouldn't have been around then. I was often seen trying to perfect the art of flying by strapping huge banana leaves to my arms, which I flapped frantically as I hurtled down the road. As far as I was concerned, if a bird could fly, so could I. Regressively, the aerodynamic principles of lift had not been explained to me, but then I was only six at the time. So in closing, ladies and gentlemen, this morning. You may, you may be interested to know some of my guiding principles in business. The first of these is a small extract from the works of Nietzsche, a 19th century German philosopher. Very simple. The strong are most powerful when alone. This goes part of the way to explain why Emirates is not part of an airline global alliance, has grown organically without merger or acquisition, and controls its own destiny. Secondly, Respect the opinions and ideas of others. They may be better than yours. Thirdly, when in doubt, follow your instinct. Fourthly, a business is only as good as the people running it. Five, nothing beats hard work. Six, never accept anything at face value or take no for an answer. Seven, every problem has a solution. And eight, and above all, keep a sense of humour and be able to laugh at yourself. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Congratulations. Can I thank Mr. Lawless and Mr. Clark for their wonderful and inspirational words? I don't think I'll ever look at banana leaves in the same way again in the future. May I now call upon Mr. Ron Hilbert, the Managing Director and Founder of the Emirates Academy of Hospitality Management, to present his address. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Tim Clark, for being with us today, an uh, inspirational address to our young graduates. <clears throat> Emirates Airlines, what a success story, and what an exciting and successful path lies ahead. We all wish you and the company the very best. We recall with fondness the keynote address delivered by Sir Maurice Flanagan, Vice Chairman of Emirates Airlines, at our first graduation congregation of 2005 a fellow Manchester United supporter. I have to say that. Your Highness, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, industry colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, students, may I begin by adding my welcome to you on behalf of all my team, all the support staff at the Emirates Academy. This is always a very, very joyous occasion, and we thank you for taking the time to share with us. I always look forward to this annual opportunity to spend a few moments to talk to you, our true supporters. An opportunity, firstly, to particularly thank the families and sponsors of our graduating students who are here celebrating today. We know that you had a massive choice of many quality international colleges and universities worldwide, and we are sincerely grateful and appreciative that you chose the Emirates Academy of Hospitality Management. An excellent opportunity, therefore, for me to update you on our progress over the past 12 months, and indeed, I am pleased to report that we continue to make significant progress. Emirates, Jumeirah, the entire hospitality, tourism, and aviation industry in Dubai, what a success story. Undisputably a world leader, under the visionary leadership of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Where can there be a better place to study international hospitality management and experience at first hand the industry that you aspire to succeed in? As I have stated so many times, our reputation grows primarily through the success of our graduates. You, our class of 2012, will to joy, today join the 300 or more who have graduated before you over the past several years. And we at the Academy are privileged to be playing a small part in this success story, in our industry and in the education sector. But with confidence, I can state that we are becoming a bigger player day by day month by month and year by year. And why do we have such confidence? It is because of you who carry our name forward. I am confident that you will do so with pride, vigor, hard work and strong ethics. This commemorative book that you see, how impressive the background, the stories and the aspirations of these young people from so many different cultures and 26 nationalities. Talking of our first graduation class of 2005, our first group, we remember in 2001 when we were 13 faculty and 15 students from such humble beginnings and the first new college ever to be accredited by the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research. And let us look at some of those graduates today because these examples I will give you in the next two minutes illustrate how our reputation will grow around the world. Rami, Director of Development with Fairmont Raffles and Swiss Hotels, I know is here today. Peter, Senior Consultant in Real Estate and Hospitality Transactions with Ernst & Young in Germany. Sarah, our first Emirati graduate, who is the Human Resources Expert of the Family Development Foundation in Abu Dhabi. Erlanga, Hotel Manager with Banyan Tree Hotels in his native country in Indonesia. And some of our graduates who've joined our parent company, the Jumeirah Group. Christian, Director of HR of the Jumeirah Group. Oleg, Director of Public Affairs of the Jumeirah Group. Raziana, Marketing Communications Manager of the Jumeirah Group. Akvile, Digital Marketing Manager of the Jumeirah Group. Nandana, Opening Director of Food and Beverage of Jumeirah Emirates Towers. And there are a couple of dozen more. Our alumni who have become entrepreneurs, and there are many. Hamad, who is actually the owner of our new noodle house in Dubai Mall. 
and our alumni who go into the academic world. Chris, who graduates today as top equal first in the master's group, and now in his second year of teaching, and next week off to Beijing to deliver some lectures at our sister school in Beijing. And the many, many others who are on fast track programs around the world with Kempinski, Fairmont Raffles, Sofitel Hyatt, Intercontinental, Residor, Four Seasons, Jumeirah, and many other chains. This is a good opportunity for me to thank our industry friends who are here today, and there are many, for your support. We thank you. So you carry our reputation around the world, and we, your team here at the Amherst Academy, are entrusted in safeguarding and enhancing the brand which we have painstakingly built up over the past 11 years. And I'm pleased to report that since we last met, we have indeed made significant progress. As I said last year at our 10th anniversary graduation, our quest to improve the delivery of quality education cannot and never will remain static. Our quest to enhance our academic reputation locally and worldwide cannot and will never remain static. Permit me just to mention a few of our achievements over the past year. We today proudly congratulate our first small batch of master's students. This is a significant event for us, a program which was designed in full consultation with industry and working with industry. The first internationally accredited masters in international hospitality management in this region. We recently welcomed 120 new students, taking our student population to just under 300 with almost 50 nationalities as we aspire to our 400 target by 2014-15. We have solidified our accreditation through the International Centre of Excellence in Tourism and Hospitality Education in Australia, thereby now connecting us to 35 more colleges and universities, primarily in the Asia Pacific area, which now means that we are fully accredited in Europe, in Asia, in the Middle East, and in nearly all parts of the world which means that students coming in and out can seamlessly transfer their credits as we are fully Bologna compliant. And as a consequence of this, we are now extending our very impressive list of partner colleges and universities around the world. Ecole Hotelière de Lausanne, arguably together with the University of Cornell, the world's most prestigious hotel school, now in our 11th year of academic associations. Lausanne students, spend time with us here, and their master's students spend time with us here, which surely is an indication of our growing reputation. The University of Cornell, where our third student now is studying with distinction. Our several partner business schools throughout Europe, principally in Germany and Scandinavia, and our partnership with a number of Lausanne certified schools in China, Mexico City, and our fifth year of celebrating our relationship with the best hospitality school in the Philippines. Next month, we formally sign an agreement with Hong Kong's leading hospitality institute, the Hong Polytechnic University. These international associations, dear friends, are important to us, and I would argue that they are actually important in our contribution to our local hospitality and tourism industry as we introduce more and more young professionals to this country. Recently, we were recognized by the Confederation of Asian Businesses and received an award for our outstanding contribution to education, a true team effort. I believe in teamwork and team spirit and rarely single out individuals. However, we all applaud our Director of Culinary Arts, Michael Kitts, who recently received the very prestigious People's Choice Award at the 2012 UK Craft Guild of Chefs Awards in London. This is a very prestigious those days before a stone was in the ground, right, Michael? Uh, and this was voted by his peers, and this is a great, great honour for us. Through our President's office, we presented a research paper at the 2012 World Economic Forum in Davos, and through our professional training and development department, we share our knowledge with clients from all over the world. I'm also pleased to report that through our student council, we continue to actively support the Dubai Autism Centre, our chosen charity. 
Your Highness, Your Excellencies, dear guests, friends, this is a special year for our Emirati graduates. From the onset, we have always clearly understood that we play an important role in the development of the hospitality in this region. In placing our graduates into business and companies where undoubtedly they will grow over the years into positions of influence. We have also clearly understood that it is our obligation to do everything we can to convince our young Emirati school leavers that hospitality and tourism and aviation, of course, is an industry in which they will flourish and will become leaders. And in the early years, we worked very closely with the Dubai Tourism Commerce Marketing Department, Tanmir, and the Emirates Nationals Development Program, and through our short programs, placed almost a thousand young Emiratis into the hospitality industry. We also set many years ago a challenging 10% Emirati target for our undergraduate numbers. Sarah Shaw, our first, graduated in 2005, and as I said earlier, is currently HR expert at the Family Development Foundation in Abu Dhabi. And just a few weeks ago, we proudly welcomed a few more Emiratis, and for the first time, we exceeded our 10% target. So we have 10% incoming students who are now Emirati nationals. This is a very special day for our young Emirati graduates, and Amna, Mariam, Rafia, Shahira, and Sharian, we applaud you and wish you every success in, in this industry here in your country. <laughs> Dear graduating students from 26 countries, this is your day. Everyone in this room wishes you well as you embark on your professional life ahead and carry our reputation worldwide as you set high standards of ethical management, dedication and commitment. We at the Emirates Academy will never forget that you had a choice and that you chose us and this we sincerely appreciate. We will always be here for you throughout your career, as you know, whenever you need us. Enjoy today. I say enjoy tonight, but I know you will. You surely deserve it. We wish you all the very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. so that we can commence the conferral of degrees. Mr. Hilda, thank you for your address. In just a very few moments, Dr. Ravan Ninoff, the Assistant Dean, will call out the names of the candidates who are graduating today. The candidates will be called in order of their awards, starting with the Master's graduates. Now then, it is my real pleasure and duty to read out the conferring statement. Forgive me if I read this, it's a legal statement. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Dean of the Emirates Academy of Hospitality Management by the United Arab Emirates Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research, the following students will now be conferred with their degrees. The following students graduate with a Master of Science degree in International Hospitality Management. Graduating with distinction, Christopher Simon Duff. Graduating with distinction, Giselle Maria Khan Walsh. Anna Katarina Magdalena Amandi Ravindra Singh Kutejo. Dolly Taldar. <laughs> 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 
Ksenia Nikolova. Mohamed Mahmoud Saba. Vivian Rosian Mendoza. The following students graduate with a Bachelor of Science degree in International Hospitality Management. Graduating with first class honors and most outstanding student, Mary Marcus Christopher Grombaum. Jandani, first class honors. <laughs> Nina Elizabeth von Rosen, first class honors. <laughs> Aunt Nor Corneli Barbara Heisele, first class honors. <laughs> Minali Samanmali Rajapakse, first class honors. <laughs> Abdelrahman Ayman Ahmed Abdelrahman. Alexander Stepanovich. Alexander James Edwards. Anand Asoka Kumar. Anna Elsie Maria Nelstam. Armin Chuk. Asel Kabilova. Benafshe Viola Rezaye Neja. Bhakti Harjani. Fahad Quentin Bahar. Irina Kuznetsova. Irina Zhigareva. Jamal George Aoun.
Rachita Kumar Raja. Sabrina Udin Svoboda. In absentia, Saima Muhammad Mahmoud. Sana Ali Sheikh. Shahira Ali Hussein Mashari. Sharihan Ali Hussein Mashari. Sumaya Mabuka Aidi. The following student graduates with a Bachelor of Arts degree in International Tourism Management. Amna Kaif Matar Bello of Bari. The following students graduate with an Associate of Science degree in International Hospitality Operations. Anna Petrucha. Dina Juma Sultanova. In absentia, Emma Nuri. In absentia, Faris Al Hussein. In absentia, Farah Dora Ferris. Hadil Al Mashadi. In absentia, Hetsvi Diren Kotak. Inês Asunção Baladas da Silva Neto. Emanuela Kalangi. In absentia, Malik Mehdi Wastani. Maria Julia Borgo Zufredini. Masoud Mohamed Sedirakat. that we invite the graduating student with the highest overall marks to make a presentation on behalf of the student body. As you're probably aware, the highest grade point average that is possible over the 50 or so courses that students take with us is 4.00. Marcus Granville achieved a staggering overall grade point average of 3.87, which is exceptional. Marcus, would you like to come and give your address, please? His Excellence, um, <laughs> uh, Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, Dear class of 2012, friends, family, and faculty. Four years ago, we embarked on a journey together. We all arrived at the Academy for Orientation Week. I guess for some of us, or at least for me, uh, it was the first time in Dubai. 
During our time here, we have experienced things that, at least for me, has been far greater than I ever imagined. As I said, I had never been to Dubai before, and I had no idea what I was getting myself into or what I were to experience. The four years I've spent in Dubai has changed me a lot. I remember when I came for the first time and I went down Sheikh Zayed Road looking up on all the skyscrapers. I was talking to this taxi driver and he was really confused on where to go and I'm sure that me being confused as well, I was overcharged. <laughs> Anyhow, I ended up here at the academy and I was welcomed by the staff here. I found my room and I remember how I walked around the corridors thinking that it was like a big, big maze. But slowly, I learned my way around the accommodation blocks and also the academy in Dubai, and I got to know the city. It truly was a life-changing experience for someone who comes from Europe in such a very different culture from here. I cannot believe that it has been four years. When I came here, I thought that four years would be an eternity, but looking back, it seems almost like we started only last year. During those four years, we have had time to do so much, the things that first comes to mind is the short placement, our first small real life exposure to the industry. I remember the six months internship when we all split up for the very first time and traveled the world. I will never forget, forget dissertation or consultancy. Two really difficult and time consuming courses, but also so incredibly developing. I don't think any of us will forget the late night study sessions in classrooms, lecture halls, and the library. But, as Aristotle once said, the roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. <laughs> I will always remember my time here in Dubai, and all of you, my friends here, and the teachers and the staff at the academy. I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you I want to thank all my friends for their friendship and their support, not only my friends here at the academy, but also my friends outside the academy, and most of all my friends back home. I also want to thank my parents and my family for the support that they have given me. On behalf of all of us in the graduating year, I would finally like to thank all the teachers and all the staff at the academy. At least for me, I will always remember Rose, and how she always took time to help you if something was needed. I will always remember Jean in the main market and how she always took the time to talk to you. I will always also remember Iwana and I would like to thank her um, for her constant input and feedback, always supporting and pushing you forward. I, will also, I also want to thank Helen and how she always greets you with a positive attitude and the, attitude and the biggest of smiles. Yeah. And I also want to thank Christiane for being one of the kindest persons I ever know. <laughs> Today and tonight marks the end of these four years together. Four years of studying really does, does make us deserve celebrating tonight. Even though tonight marks the end of the time, our time at the Academy, I think it is important to remember that graduation is not the end, it is the beginning. Thank you. Marcus, thank you for that lovely speech. Now, all that remains is to thank you for attending the celebration of the achievements of our graduates. Can I remind the graduates that you remain a part of the family of the Emirates Academy of Hospitality Management? You are now also officially members of the Alumni Association, and as such, we hope and trust that you'll stay in contact with us in the years to come. On behalf of the faculty, students, and staff, we wish you, our graduates, well and all success in your careers and future lives. 
This ceremony is now concluded. Refreshments are being served outside this hall, and you're all very welcome to join us. May I ask you to stand as the platform party departs. Thank you.